What's up, everybody? This is John Z from uh, Comic Book Invest, CBSI, and Tales from the Flip Side, here with another episode of Global Comic Safari. This is episode five, officially, uh, and today we're going to cover uh, Creepy 17. So, with me, as always, is Matt Royball. What up, John? <laughs> Welcome, man. Uh, this is a this is going to be a fun one. So, first, just want to thank... Uh, CBSI Comic Book Invest for helping us out with the uh, giveaway and all kind of other fun stuff and supporting the podcast and the channel. Um, I also wanted to point out they they have uh, did a feature article that was uh, a bit on the foreign side. We don't always see those. Uh, just this week they published one on uh, some Turkish comics, some moderns. Um, awesome. So this shop is I can't pronounce it in Turkish, so I'm just going to say what it is. Uh, their logo's up there, but it's Parallel Universe, translated to English. Um, they have some really nice exclusive covers that they did for a couple of books. Uh, the Batman Rebirth number one is up for sale still, as well as the uh, Vampirella Red Sonia cover. So they've got a couple of great exclusives. Um, the book that really caught everybody's attention, though, was not actually their exclusive, but this oh, yeah. amazing fantasy... Um, 15, I don't want to call it a reprint because it's got some other things in it, but it's a, a bound edition. Um, and this Sea Lore cover, um, which was limited to 250, really got kind of people talking. Um, it's tiny. With the, you know, to homage to, uh, to Amazing Fantasy 15 plus, add Spider Gwen, Miles Morales, and it's, it's just great coloring, uh, nice work. So uh, check it out. We've got links to both um, the shop, the IG for a parallel universe, as well as a link to, if you want to buy a copy of this amazing fantasy 15, if there's any left, it's going to be down there as well. So thank those guys for uh, just keeping the foreign, foreign niche interesting, right? Hey, John, can I mention something about this book too? Absolutely. So the back cover, do you see how you have spite the spidey head and then it's surrounded by like this kaleidoscopy yeah. uh, bands of color. So, that's kind of a Turkish thing on some of their Spider-Man books on the back. You will see this is now, this is like a modern kind of reimagining of it. It looks a little different, but uh, you'll see this kind of Spidey head with these multicolored rainbow um, effects on the back. You'll see it on a lot of the older vintage books. Huh. And so I love how they call this out like that. And, and you know, it's what's neat about it is you wouldn't know unless you had, Turkish vintage books said it's related to that. No, I wouldn't have. I just put the back image up because it was so kind of striking. It's super cool. It's super striking. And on a lot of uh, a lot of their books, they'll have that exact image on the back. Awesome. That's pretty neat. have you a along to, get, to know the crazy. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the vintage Turkish books have that that really <laughs> cool back cover. I love how they're redoing it here, too. And, and, uh, I've talked to the store owner. He's a rad dude. Like, I'm just going to interject in that. Awesome, awesome shop. Well, support him. Check out some cool stuff. And I guess keep your eye on uh, the Turkish books. They're putting out some some cool original um, pieces. You know, this yeah. is not available anywhere else. This is... 250? Cool. That's tiny. They're, they did several different covers. This particular cover was only 250. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's, that's super cool. So... From one beautiful book to today's beautiful book that we're going to cover the rest of the show, the iconic <sighs> Creepy 17, um, October of 67, a very stunning, beautiful Frank Frazetta cover. You can't go wrong with that. Uh -uh. Um, just the colors involved, the imagery with the executioner there and that just... Uh, it's beautiful. Orange sky, I guess I'll call it's it. Like is it dawn or dusk, John? I, when I, is it time to die? It's probably <laughs> dusk. I think everybody dies at dusk, not dawn. But I could be wrong. Um, but just beautiful. Um, yeah. Magazine size. This is the old uh, horror black and white style magazines. Um, and some. I'm just going to read the stories in here because it is it is relevant as we kind of go through these issues because they're not really reprinting individual story or individual books so much as, yeah. as the cover and other things. So inside this one has uh, Loathsome Lore, Zombie, Thundering Terror, Mummy's Hand, Heritage of Horror, 
Creepy Fan Club, Image and Wax, A Night's Lodging, and The Haunted Sky. Ooh, I like that, Haunted Sky. But like I said, to me, the, uh, Creepy's a great run. All that stuff is great. This cover is just, you know, anything you can get by Frazetta is, you should have. If you haven't yeah. got it, you should look at it. It's iconic. Um, it's it's comic book history, literally in a nutshell, in many ways. Absolutely. Um, and just kind of shifting, let's let's kind of show you what the other books we're going to be talking about. Here's the set. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about nine total issues, including the American. So, yes, uh, a couple are very close reproductions. A couple are um, a little more imaginative and we'll kind of get into the details there oh yeah <laughs> that's one way to put it john <laughs> this, this set took a group uh effort on we needed some help because there was just a lot going on with all the details so uh want to thank some guys i'm gonna let matt uh, throw throw them uh some kudos yeah definitely need kudos you know we couldn't do this show without help from the community and for this for this show particularly cecilio a jacobo glass ernie lasco and Stefan Poitra, those guys helped us gather the info. Now, we, we do our part, too. We go in and we, and we hunt for that stuff. But, you know, we got to put a show together. We're putting out a show on average of once a week. So, you know, we know a lot about these books, but our minds are not like, you know, like Sheldon's. They're not – what do they call that when your memory is perfect, John? There's um, a term for it. Um, didactic memory or didactic yeah, yeah. memory, something like that. Photographic. Yeah, like we don't we we have to create show notes and figure a lot of this stuff out. And without those guys' help, we couldn't have done this. Now, specifically, this set picture is Ernie Lasco set. So Ernie is the guy that that created the International Horror Group on Facebook. He's been in the game for quite a lot a long time. And this is a beautiful set. This is his. And Cecilio and Stefan Poitra, those guys are both total horror freaks. And they're always trying to get me to go into the horror stuff. But they helped us with this, too. So kudos to those guys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, huge thanks, guys. We, we, we needed it. This, this huge was a, thanks. It was a massive uh, amount of information there. Yep. Biggie. So we're going to jump right into it and go to Spain. Spain. I'm going to let you pronounce this one. I think this is Dossier Negro. This is issue 38. It was published by Ibero Mundial de Ediciones on July of 1972. The interiors are black and white. And what's interesting about this one is they don't credit Frazetta. So it uses a non-credited Frazetta cover. So <laughs> for whatever reason, they just didn't decided they didn't think the man needed credit. I don't know why. They, they should be seeing the executioner then. Yes, exactly. That wasn't cool to do to the master. Um, <laughs> yeah. This contains, and this is all in Spanish, um, Los Pavorosos y Espulzialantes Shocks del Tremendo Figueras, The Gloomy House of Dreams, Lament of a Father, Inheritance of Terror, Frankenstein and Fair Phenomena, Harassment, Room Number 22, and um, 243 blank pages for whatever that means so those are the stories in there and um yeah, yeah so, i, mean, I, 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 I kind of like the it yellow doesn't think anything overlapped there yeah i don't think anything overlapped at all they just used the cover and threw some horror stories in there and that that's why with this episode we're not going to say it contains issue blank and issue blank because of the of the way the format of horror mags was always kind of built around was you know there's multiple multiple stories that are all inside. And I think with these horror mags, they just pick it, they pull stories from wherever. And I don't even think the covers necessarily matches the interiors. I could be wrong on that, but no, uh, not on, on the this, American issues, this is not my favorite one of the, the set we're talking about. The yellow just, it you doesn't like help it anything. Yellow? It doesn't help with the background. They kind of trimmed out a lot of the bright orange and the kind of the background yeah. and everything. They just, it's really bare bones. And they have you are you noticed because they crop so tightly, I think we're losing some of the altar. Yeah, we, we lost oh. a lot. They 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 cut out I, I think they just took the cover and cut the part they needed and overlaid um a template over it. Really, that's what yeah. it looked like to me. They just it, very bare bones cover just seeing the execution. You lose just all the detail. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I kind of like the the contrast of the title. 
the dossier negro is pretty cool but um yeah it could have been handled differently for sure yeah all right so we're going to jump to the closest variation of the original and that is our friends in france france this they is the creepy the title, five. Even. Yeah, they did, and then the and the title font, the creepy five. This was published by Publicness in on December of nineteen seventy, and uh, the first story is Monster Rally, and the second story would be Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde. Third story is Zombies. So I don't know if that connects with the zombie story that was in the original one. There's a possibility, um, and the fourth story is The Executioner. Fifth story oh, is Creepy Fan Club. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the sixth story is The Wax Museum. Seventh story is Release the Monsters. And the eighth story is The Circus and Death Games. Kind of like that. But yeah, this one is basically the American book. Just Yeah, they just the put some left. French titles at the bottom yeah. there. French titles at the bottom, and they altered the, the top left nomenclature up there. And I think it looks great. It's a cool, cool issue. They, they realized they couldn't improve on the original and left it be. And I like with the whole, I kind of like his original art with the skulls kind of on the stairs and stuff. Yeah. Whereas the Dossier Negro, by cropping it so tight, they they did the art a disservice, I think. No, this one they put some stuff over some of the skulls, but that's it's okay. I understand. Yeah. yeah. They at least did it in a not super important part. So we'll, yeah. leave, it, we'll leave them be with that. Yeah, I like I like the French one. And so now we're going to jump over to Sweden. Sweden. This is the chalk. And I forget what's rights and guys are going to kill me. But what's the little guy's name, the head? Um, is that, that's not the Crypt Keeper. No. Rights and fans, I'm sorry. I forget his name. But I, I like his addition here. This, this one is the sweet. Swedish. This is the chalk number 10. It was published by Semic in 1975, and it contains these stories. The Mark of the Beast, Otto Lumas, Lost and Found, The Land of Bone, Perfect Match, and Out of Her Head. Hmm. And this, I don't mind this crop as much. Do you? No, it wasn't as tight because you still see some of the skulls. I, honestly, I think they made the background more uh, orange and took out the yellow. It kind of looks that way, almost Does like it, yeah, a they, they a tone or something. Yeah, they definitely took out the yellow tones, um, but I, I think it matches that that was aqua blue. I'm gonna call it yeah, title like and, an and aqua, aqua marine or something. Yeah, so I black always looks good on a cover. So yeah, um, yeah, it's like it frames it nicely, and I wonder if that bara for Vuxa. I wonder if that's like uh, for adults or something. They almost yeah. look like they darkened everything too, because the art on the executioner is a little darker. Yeah, everything's a little, little more. So they, they did a little, little color adjustments on it, but I, not in a bad way. Where the French just didn't seem to go as well, in my opinion. So yeah, I like it. All right, so that's a cool one. Absolutely, we're gonna go visit our friends in uh, Argentina. Argentina. This is the Argentina Dr. Tetrick 24, published by Mazon, Argentina, in July of 1972. Now, before I get to the, the stories that this one did, I need to bring up the fact that these Argentinian Mazon horror mags are extremely difficult to find. Um, I don't know what it is or why it is, but uh, in the horror circles, they are legendary for difficult South American books. Um, they're extremely difficult. So all the Mazone magazines from Argentina that are connected to a set, like this one, uh, the, the first Vampy, they always seem to be the one of, if not the most difficult to source. We do not exactly know why. We don't know if it was distribution issues, if they had small print runs, or you know, another another idea, it's kind of going off on a tangent, but who knows? Maybe in Argentina, they didn't save the horror stuff as much um, for whatever reason, or they, maybe it wasn't as horror wasn't as successful there. I don't know. But this publisher's work is extremely hard to find. And Ernie told me personally that when he found this book, he was screaming at, at 
he was like thanking the gods because these books are so hard to find. <laughs> um, this one's interiors are Terror Out of Time, Bella Lugosi article, uh, Adam Link and the Athlete Champion, and This Space is Yours, Fatal Premonition and Horror Heritage. Huh. Um, and I believe that, yeah, this, this is a toughie. And I, I think this one is black and white on the interiors. Um, you know, most of these are going to be black and white on the interiors, unless I state otherwise. But, um, yeah, this is a great book. And they really kept it. I mean, yeah, they, it's, they, it's real, real true to the original. Actually, it's cleaner because the original has um, some, some titling down at the bottom step. And it's not even yeah. on this one. Yeah, this is a this is a... This is a neat one. I like it. And you know what's kind of cool about the background on this one? Can you go to the American version real quick, John? Yeah. See how this one's really very, uh, it's like darker, but I feel like the background's different. It's like maybe a little lighter or something. I feel like I they know. just lightened the whole thing up because you can see the stairs and everything yeah. else a little brighter. They brightened it all up. I where like it. The, I, where, I where, the, like where the chalk went dark, this went the reverse. So yeah, it's, I, uh, it, it's this cool. might be my favorite one. Yeah. So far, this is my favorite one. And that title is awesome. Yeah. Like electrical. Not sure why they went with the green and then the blue. You yeah. Know, that's kind of weird. But otherwise uh, really great looking book. Yeah. I, I like this one. And for being so hard to find, you find, you see a Dr. Tetrick out in the wild. If you're watching <laughs> buy this, buy it because they are extremely hard to find. All right. We're going to go visit our first book out of Mexico. There's a couple there. Mexico! So. Viva Mexico! Oh, wait. No, Oops, I finish. went the wrong one. All okay. right. Mexico. Wow, John. Mind blown. <laughs> this, one, this one went the other way and added some stuff. <laughs> they added some stuff. And this is, I think this is a fully redrawn cover. Now, Notice that his dagger's gone. And he's got a skull. He's got a skull instead. I guess he wanted, in Mexico, he wanted to to have the big belt buckle instead. Um, this I'm is, jumping back just for a second. Huh. Okay, go for it. I just want to show the dagger. Is, is there? Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. Right, go to the skull. See, yeah. They just removed his dagger. The whole, the whole cover's redrawn. Yeah. There's a lot more blood on the steps, too. Look at the steps. Yeah. And the, the, the woman there, and yeah, coloring's a little different. She's done. Um, so this is the Mexican El Conde Bartok 68. It's published by Promotorro K on September of 1968. Now, this book has original stories and art from Mexico. Um, now I want to talk about this one. For a little bit. Now, the publisher Promotorro K was located in Mexico City, it went out of business in the late 90s. And this editorial published original characters and stories, okay? They did not do translation of, translations of U.S. books. So all of their content is indigenous. Mm -hmm. um, the most famous collection and hero from this publisher would be Kaliman. I don't know anyone that's been in the game, in the foreign game for a little bit. Um, you'll notice while you're hunting for foreigns, you find in South America and Mexico, you see a lot of Kaliman. Well, Kaliman was a Mexican superhero and mentalist known for his mind powers and mental strength. His signature line was, the person who is in control of his own mind can control everything. I kind of like that. Now, <clears throat> the brief story of the character. Bartok is the last name of a European count named Sergio Bartok, born in 1932. He is a half-man, half-vampire, and is Kaliman's nemesis. Bartok huh. was a successful character, and this collection lasted 68 weekly issues. In the comics, he's a narrator, so he narrates the horror stories and ends them with some kind of twisted line. Very similar to Uncle Creepy! I yeah. think that's who that guy was. Uncle Creepy. Or Cousin Eerie, the famous EC narrators. Um, the cover has nothing to do with the inside stories. They just used a known cover for for this group of of stories. So you could probably call this a homage or a swipe. Uh, but according to my notes, 
It was definitely unlicensed. In fact, we don't even know who the artists were that did these stories or did this cover. So unlicensed, decided to, you know, to go in the uh, female death murder route. Yeah. And um, yeah, this is a crazy one. (laughs) El Conde Bartok. All right. So (laughs) we're going to go to another one that added a little bit to it. Um, This one we we flashed earlier, but now we can kind of fully get into it. This one is super fucking cool to me. (laughs) Super fucking cool to me. This is the one out of Turkey. This is Korku 57. It was published by Benili in October of 1974. And the cover is a mashup. It includes the classic Frazetta art, but it also includes classic San Julian art. So the forefront of the cover is Vampirella. And that that's an image that was done by San Julian, who is a famous Frazetta or a famous uh, Vampirella artist. And then the background is the Frazetta, is the executioner. Now, Korku's are extremely hard to source. Um, they can hey, be... Maybe our friend in Parallel Universe could do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, now, they're not as hard as the Argentinians, um, but they are extremely hard to find. Um, and this issue, I don't have the interior information for it. But um, Turkey is one of those kind of nuts to crack that can be difficult until you find your way in and once you find your way in you're able to start getting a lot more material um their ebay is called it's got a really weird name john have you ever heard their ebay uh who's what they're called turkeys no it's called giddy giddy or it almost reminds me of like giddy up it's like <laughs> giddy giddy or but um so if you have a source that can get stuff off of turkish ebay giddy giddy or um yeah, like you can you can get some good stuff. And now that we know this comic book shop guy, well, guess who I'm gonna go for all my Turkish needs? I'm gonna go to this guy. Um, but <laughs> this is a great cover. What what do you think of this one? Well, I think it's fitting. I mean, you know, Frazetta kind of started off Vampirella with issue yeah. one. Another Frazetta, you know, art there, so it 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 fits. Um, I, the blue title, the background's a little lighter than some of the others. It's, it looks like they kind of put in their own kind of dusk dawn thing too. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more yellow toned at the bottom. It it, it almost looks like they repainted part of it because it, it's I don't know they repainted the background in my opinion. That's what it yeah, looks like. The background's definitely redone. Um, um, a little brighter, but I, it works. I mean, it doesn't not work. I like I love it. And I love the way Vampirella's like staring up lovingly at him, like. You know, because that was vampy, right? She was like oh, the yeah. sexy vampire. Didn't have a problem killing anybody or sucking your blood, but you were going to have fun while she was doing it, right? <laughs> look, <laughs> look at her looking at the executioner. She's like looking at him like lovingly, like playing with her hair and shit. I think somebody's got a crush, John. Yeah. Well, I mean, like if you're going <laughs> to combine two characters, you did a good job here. I mean, yeah, we see I, it, we've seen it a lot with like the non-canon uh, Spider-Mans we've shown before mm-hmm. where they take pieces and bits and... Oh yeah, you know, tweak them. This is this is a this is a little bit more straight rendition of just blatantly taking two things and putting them together. Putting them right together, yeah. And you know, I can't remember. Um, so the vampy art, it was um, what's his name, San Julian. Yeah. I can't remember where where she is in this piece. I, I'm gonna. I'm curious now. I'm gonna go back and find where this was. This homage was taken from, just because well, I want to see how it was done. You figure it out. I'll throw it in the notes for the episode. Yeah, I, I'm going to go back and, and figure out where that is because I think that's a great mashup. I love this one. All right, we got next one is back to uh, Nord to the Nordic country. Nordic countries with uh, Finland. Shocky. So that's so that who was the guy? We just figured out who the guy's uh, name was. Uh, something eerie. No, it was. Uh, you said Uncle Creepy. Uncle Creepy. I think that's Uncle Creepy. I Maybe don't know. I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm not going to speak because I don't I'm know. Not enough of a horror guy, and, and and sorry, horror fans. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting more into it. The whole, my horror guy friends are really getting me a lot more into it. But um, I'm sorry if I'm misspoken. But anyway, this is Shocky number two. It was published by Semic in 1976, and it contains the exact same insides of the Swedish Chalk Den. So it's got the stories, Mark of the Beast, Otto Luminous, 
Lost and Found, Land of the Bone, Perfect Match, and Out of Her Head. And so these books were basically, I think, published at exactly, you know, like almost, I wouldn't even be surprised if they were printed on the same printer, just for the different distribution in the different countries, one in Finland and one in Sweden. Because everything's basically dates, but not much. Not by much, but I mean, the blue, that yeah, little call out there. It's I mean, the it's same cover minus the, the, the wording. Yeah. You know what I, I, I am noticing, though, um, on the chopping block, seems like there's a lot of blood uh, staining there. Well, Can you go back, back to the American? It's or just... on that one, yeah. Well, I was American? going back to this one. They did. It's a little different, or maybe it's just a different scan. It's a little. It's, it's a like little more red. The whole thing is a little more red versus this one. That's just a little closer to the original. Yeah. Can I see the original again? The American. Yeah. Oh no, it's, it's dark. There. It's yeah, just it's real dark. dark. It's just yeah. Okay. So yeah, lots. It, it's not quite the same. I really when I looked at the first time, I thought they were the same, but it's it's. Bare minimum had a little recolor, recoloring, re yeah. you know, lighting. So, which one do you prefer? This one, the Finland or the Swedish? I think I like the uh, the Swedish just a tad more. I don't know, hmm. but both nice. Did we we haven't talked about what's in here, huh? No, uh, we yeah, we did. All right, so then we're yeah, gonna it's move. Exa it's exactly the same as Sweden. Oh, that's right. We're gonna move back to Mexico and show a couple more. Um, I guess probably redraws is most what yeah. we're looking at. There's this there's lots of redraws, and there was a couple more that the guys mentioned, but just didn't yeah. have enough info to even include. Um, these yeah. are the ones we kind of had some some solid information on. Yeah, this is this is an interesting redraw. This is Epi Episodios One Fifty Six, published by Editorial Sol on December twelfth of nineteen seventy two. Now, these interiors are color, believe it or not, and it has Tales from the Crypt stuff, Vault of Horror, Haunted, and other pre-code stories for the interiors. And the publisher, Editorial Sol, is, they're pretty well known in Mexico, and for, according to what I've been told, they were a really fierce competitor with La Prensa and Navarro. Oh. Editorial Sol was kind of doing stuff around the same time, and they were uh, they were in a real competition with them. Um, Editorial Soul published translations of other horror titles, uh, Tales from the Crypt, Vault of Horror, um, Haunted. Um, they even published a Fighting American and Frankenstein from Prize Comics. Huh. You know the the Frank the cool Frankenstein yeah, yeah. cover. The yeah, ones, yeah. It, the Editorial Soul does some of those, and they're badass. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, this this publisher closed, closed in uh, 1980, and unfortunately for this one, I, I don't know the exact stories. I just know they are stories, and I, I I like the redraw, but I feel like the executioner's face is a little rough. It's a little. Yeah, on the rough I mean, side. if you if you actually used if they just swiped the original image and put it on here, it would look amazing. Because the back yeah. is just. It's creepy. It's got a little different taste yeah. to it with the almost like the Grim Reaper kind of look in the back. Yeah. Um, just wasn't as well done. Yeah, it just wasn't as well done. But I I like the uh I like the 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 idea and I like the the route they were going um by adding some background instead of the dawn or the dusk. Yeah. I I kind of feel like it because the face is a little funky, it's not as creepy as it could have been. Exactly. But, I mean, still very cool. And this last one, I wouldn't even consider it part of the set because it's such a massive redraw, but, um, you know, it's got, got the basis of the Executioner on it and another one from Mexico. Yeah, but this one is interesting to me. Because they take the executioner's mask off. It's so cool. Okay, so this one is, uh, again, Mexico. This is Las Momias de Guarajato, 88, issue 88. It was published by editorial Orizaba on November 9th of 1967. And it's a modified cover for sure. I mean, it, it's beyond a homage. They just kind of... They took the character took idea. Yes. Now, the artist uh, of here 
is a guy by the name of Antonio Santillian. Now, why Antonio Santillian is kind of a cool name is, well, not only is he a, a big, huge artist in Mexico, but he's kind of a satirist. So he's huh. kind of a satire artist there. He did a lot of comedic stuff and kind of <coughs> uh, horror stuff. <coughs> but a lot of it was, you know, just kind of, you know, satire, commenting on life in Mexico and, the, you know, the, the life of, of your daily lives of Mexican citizens. Um, so I would kind of, I would kind of say he's almost like a Mexican Robert Crumb. You know, uh, Robert Crumb was doing underground comics and they were doing a lot of comics dealing with describing life, you know, for Americans in the 60s and all that. So he's kind of like that. Santillian is the artist, but he's famous. But I love that we get to see the executioner's face. Awesome. Now, all the stories on these are original. There's nothing in here that's taken from, uh, from American public works. Notice the Santillian signature there on the side, so we know that it's him. Um, everything inside there is just original. But what what are, you, what are your thoughts on this cover, Josh? I like it for what it is. I mean, it's got a lot going on. It's got the punch, the facing kind of thing. It's got a crime kind of vibe to it. It's got the noose yeah. in the background. Um, you know, it's not the greatest version of of the character, but it's not bad. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's bad. I, you know, I I kind of feel like if you're building this set. This one kind of belongs in it. I mean, yeah, the skull is well done. Yeah, and and how neat! Like, okay, so if I was, I like that this is the last book that we show too, because if you were presenting this set to a person in person, you know, you'd be going through them um, and you'd be like, "Oh, that's cool, that's cool," and then you get to this one, and you'd be like, "Oh shit, his mask is off. That's awesome." Well, he doesn't have his axe though either, which is interesting. But yes, doesn't have his axe, just has his. You know, his, his mask in his hand. Um, and then it looks like there's blood coming out of his arm. Do you see that? I thought those were like the uh, the eye ma marks or something. Or on his on his arm. Huh. Like that guy that's punching that dude, I think he's got a knife. And it okay. kind of looks like he's cutting the executioner's hand. It's, it's, an, it's an odd cover, but I love it, man. It's well done. I will say yeah. that. If I ran into this book in the wild, I'd pick it up. Absolutely. So I'm going to flash one more time to the set, just to let everybody kind of take it all in one more time. Yep. And yeah. uh, again, this is Ernie Lasko's set. I'm going to call. I'm going to call him out again. Thank you, Ernie, for helping us. And look, I bet when see that Doctor Tetrick up there, I bet when he got that and he put it with it, he screamed like a little baby boy. <laughs> yeah, I am sure. All right. Well, just a couple other things for you. Um, all you foreign fans, if you're in the uh, northeast of the country near Boston, uh, CBSI and myself included will be doing uh, some panels and some fun discussions at the Northeast Comic Con um, in Boxborough, Massachusetts. It'll be March 13th through the 15th. Um, the CBS cr CBSI crew uh, will be doing um, some Q&A, some panels, some uh, contests, and, and just some overall con coverage so come check it out i'm gonna do a That's small awesome. presentation on some foreign comics just trying to get some interest so if you're a foreign fan come by and just talk we, we can just have some qa and just have some hangout time so come check yeah. it out if you're near the area uh i'll put How the link and in information in the uh discussion i think it's about a half hour outside of boston half hour half hour outside of boston i bet you yeah. there's some peeps that would want to go absolutely just gotta let them know we will, I know we, will, that, we will continue to broadcast more and more about the uh, Northeast Comic Con, but we just yep. want to want to get it out there today. Um, and then everything else I have is uh, just check Matt out more on uh, weekly podcast Foreign Comics Calling. You can check it out on iTunes. Please you know, subscribe, uh, leave a review, help them get some uh, yep. get get the word out there. Help, help the crazies get more infected. Yeah, we're um, crazy. We're zombies. And if you want to hear some more and you just now stumbled upon us, check out the Foreign Comic Collector Magazine group on uh, Facebook. There's a link in the bio as well. And uh, just leave us some comments. Let us know what you want to see, what you want more of. Um, we love doing these sets because it, it is interesting to us and we get to learn about it all. Um, we love yep. doing the, the pickups and the roundtables. But just let us know what else you like and uh, help us help us 
get you the content you need to see. So uh, yeah, I I kind of think a, a question like if people submitted questions that we could answer absolutely. one of these days, even if we did it live, John, absolutely. a live show might be kind of cool in the future. If you, if you're into those live shows on YouTube, they seem to be getting more popular. Absolutely, I think it'd be fun to just do to get me and you and maybe two other foreign guys and just do a live Q and A. We that can, might be kind of neat. We can work on. It. Let us know if you like that idea. Um, yeah, let us know. And then just help us out, like and subscribe if you like the content, and uh, we'll see you again real soon with another episode. See you guys. This was fun, John. Absolutely. It was a good one.